My name is Anthony Reed. I was 22 years old when I was diagnosed with end-stage renal disease, and in 2017, I had the opportunity to receive a kidney transplant. What I have is a hereditary disease. Um, I have what's called a horseshoe kidney. During the pregnancy, the two kidneys don't separate, they're fused together. I had started having vision problems beforehand. Um, I couldn't see, I was basically blind in one of my eyes. The worst thing that really got me was I was having a buzzing in the back of my head. That's what prompted me to go into the ED. The ED doctor came in and he said, you know, we're in ESRD and stage renal disease. The stages of kidney disease have to do with the level of kidney function. They're so-called G stages from one to five. And as the kidney function decreases, the stage increases. If you have a GFR above 60 or greater, you're very good. Being at three to five, I was in pretty bad shape. It was a wonder I was still even living. Kidneys have uh, basically stopped working. It's not able to take the toxins off your body. When kidneys fail, the patients have a whole variety of symptoms. The risk increases for heart disease and kidney outcomes like progressive loss of kidney function. Of course, there's a lot of going through my mind. I think I was kind of numb. You've overloaded. And so it takes you a little bit to process that. And then you realize, this isn't going away. This is where I'm at. There was really only one option for me, and that was to go ahead and put a chest catheter in, which goes kind of directly into the heart. So that's how they had to give me emergency dialysis to get me started. I started to feel the effects right away. Um, you know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't as washed out as I was originally. Yeah, once dialysis started, then I realized I was very sick. They have what's called a dialyzer. It takes the old blood out, goes into a filter, brings the clean blood back in, so that way it gets those toxins off of your body. It really was the, um, the life saving for me. Uh, they said I'd probably went to sleep one night that week and probably would never woke up. It's very important to know when to prepare the patient for dialysis or kidney transplant and when dialysis or kidney transplant is needed. They pretty much initially address that issue right away. You know, you might want to look into transplant. You're young, you have a um, generally good health other than your kidneys don't work, so you're a very good candidate for this process. It would be time to start to say, uh, does Anthony have a, a family member or a friend who's willing to donate a kidney? So a living donor, a kidney transplant, or if he doesn't have a living donor, then we can start with a deceased donor. The laboratory is extremely important for finding a match, so the blood type uh, usually is matched. Then there are other more complex types of matching. There's HLA matching and there are cross matching. All of this is dependent on the laboratory professional to determine if the kidneys are compatible. The challenge that we have is that we have more patients on the wait list than we have available kidneys. They were expecting five to nine years was my wait time. During that time, I did not realize that somebody was thinking about donating a kidney to me. Actually, I had a birthday party. Um, not sure what was going to happen, not sure if I was going to be here living or not. I uh, did not want to get my hopes up, but the uh, donor came to my birthday party and that's when she offered to donate the kidney. I was in a state of shock, not, did not really know what to say. What a birthday present. <laughs> For the recipient or the person who has received the kidney, the care in the beginning is usually very intense. So they, they're in the hospital for a number of days, hopefully till the kidneys have, have recovered to a normal level. The transplant went well. I was very happy with that. A lot of things were going through my mind at the time, but um, being it's a hereditary disease, that's something that could be passed down to my children. Um, so when my son was born, well, before he was born, we made sure we had ultrasounds done on him. They checked out his kidneys, they're fine. So I'm very happy. There was some changes that I had to make. They wanted me to go to labs for two, two times a week. Um, so I went to the lab two times a week to get my blood drawn to see where my levels were at. Without the numbers uh, from the laboratory, we really would be shooting in the dark. We really wouldn't know how to make our decisions or we wouldn't have uh, evidence to make our decisions. Without the pathologists or lab professionals, my life would be very different today. They may not see patients face to face all the time, but they are making a difference. Without that lab work, um, I would more than likely be just a memory. I wouldn't be married, I wouldn't have had my kids. 
Um, so I'm very grateful for the labs.